20th of November. Can't wait. We're uh, flying up to Broome and the temperature is in the mid 30s. Quite hot but uh, there's plenty of pools and the world famous Cable Beach. Here we are at the Virgin Gate. It does feel like a real holiday because of the fact that we're actually getting on a plane. So, here's to fun and adventures for the next seven days. Woohoo! <laughs> wow, it's really quite empty. So, we weren't sitting together previously. The kind lady gave us a emergency exit row. So, we've got three seats and the middle one's empty. This empty airport has really reminded us of how lucky we are to be here in Western Australia, though. With the rest of the world facing so many issues with COVID-19, our isolation has finally paid off. We keep reminding ourselves every day to count our lucky stops. As you know. <laughs> Get ready? Yeah. So the plane's on time, which is a good thing. Finally we're going to go on a plane again. Yes. <laughs> Been looking forward to this. So it's 20 degrees at the moment here in Perth. And when we step off, it'll be a balmy 35. <laughs> and a humidity factor of about 65 to 70 percent. Nice straight hair, won't be like that for long. Okay. Broom, here we go. Hello. Hi there. Alright, one two, eight, and sister, just in the opening for you today on the right. Thank you. We've got so much space. Yes, it's pretty cool. We're in the uh, emergency exit aisle. Heaps of legs around. Look at that. <laughs> no, it's not a toilet seat. <laughs> Now close the last cabin door, feel free to keep using your handheld devices. Make sure you turn them on flight mode. Undaring weird there, look how full it is. As well as Perth being one of the most isolated capital cities in the world, the state of Western Australia is huge. The flight to Broome takes just over two hours or two and a half hours. It's 2,050 kilometres or 1,270 miles. That's 22 hours and 45 minutes by car. Welcome to Broome. It's so bright and hot. <laughs> we went off to get the car. It's warming up out there. Yeah. This is the place that we 
can actually sit and look out over Cable Beach. The storm is past now, apparently. Big storm this morning. And now it's time to order some breakfast. This is the big breakfast. It's very large for us, so we get it to share. So this is little, tiny, tiny little crab that make all these little balls. And Greg's just commented that he doesn't want to be stepping on their little balls. <laughs> Again, the in point. <laughs> the, uh, the lighthouse. Oh my god! I didn't realise it was actually a lighthouse. <laughs> She's getting hot. That is gorgeous. Looks like a private house. Which just seems very bizarre. It's like you would think that it would be some sort of public property, a restaurant. Colours are just going to look like they're massively oversaturated because it's actually hard to believe that they're real, even when you're standing here. a bit of a search around we were unable to find Anastasia's pool but then we found out later that it was actually destroyed by a storm in 2014. Such a shame. It's funny to think that over 40 years ago I was roaming around these rocks when we lived up here. No wonder sandstone is such a uh, sought after stone, it's so varied in colour, texture. This weathered rock is uh, sort of sandstone, the iron ore by the looks of it down there. But look at the massive fracture there, unreal. Okay. How cool 
level is this? Sun pictures. What is that? So back in the day, the undercover section was canvas seats like this, were for adults only. And out here were benches, so they weren't flush like this. And this was for the uh, kids. And then that was actually grass. Adults all used to bring their eskies. Yeah, what a cool place. After checking out a couple of the cafes in town, which were really busy and very hot, we headed back to Xander's where it was a little bit cooler. Living a hard life. Oh, wow. Well, that makes it all worth it.